Shared services is a term that is new, but shared services isn't new. Um, HMSO was set up around about 1780, and that provided a shared service to government organisations and continued to do so for, for uh, much of its services until about 1986-87, when it was then just left with the parliamentary publishing side. Um, in the early 19, round, again round about 1986-87, up to that time, government property, government department's property, was owned and run by the Property Services Agency, and that was responsible for all construction and all construction contracts in central government. Unfortunately, it showed a slight problem with shared services because there are a load of corruption scandals in about 1981 and 1982. Uh, there was an investigation into this and the property service agency was actually folded up and responsibility for estates and including construction given to government departments. Unfortunately, many of them did not have the expertise to actually manage these effectively. But I think that uh, perhaps what some of these examples show is the shared services is actually not a magic formula. Shared services is actually quite difficult. It needs to be monitored properly. And I was discussing with one of the uh, exhibitors out there that is it shared services that delivers the savings or is it actually the change and the work that goes into the change management and the analysis before we have shared services that actually really delivers the efficiency. Um, and I think that sometimes then when there is a change to pulling back things back in-house, again, it is all the work that goes into that that perhaps delivers a lot of the efficiency. So that doesn't undermine the argument for shared services, but one shouldn't underestimate the value of suddenly looking at one's functions for the first time in a very detailed way and saying, is there a better way of doing this?